This video is sponsored by Ren. The year is 2121, and the Earth has become uninhabitable. Every single scientist spent the past 100 years trying to decipher Nirvana High Paladin instead of solving climate change. Simply put, the complexity of Yu-Gi-Oh! has ended the world. But hope still remains. Two heroes, the great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandsons of MBT and RJ have made a startling discovery. Right when Yu-Gi-Oh! was just beginning, before Synchros, before Goats, before Master Rule 1, there existed... another rule set. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Junior Rules. No tributes, no quick plays, one spell, and one trap per turn. Now, using Tachyon technology, these two must contact their ancestors, convince them to play the Yu-Gi-Oh! Junior rules, and conscript as many of their fellow yu gi tubers as possible to start a movement to simplify the game that would eventually end the human race. This is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Junior Journey. But first... Here's a word about today's sponsor, Ren. Ren is a simple and effective way to make a difference in the climate crisis. I'm not joking. We're sponsored by a climate org. <laughs> Listen, I have full faith and confidence that RJ and I are going to fix this thing, but on the off chance we don't, Ren's a great way to help. It's a website where you can calculate your individual carbon footprint, receive information about what you can do to decrease it, and purchase offsets like tree planting campaigns to compensate for the carbon usage you can't reduce. Once you sign up to make a monthly contribution to offset your footprint, you'll receive regular updates from the projects you supported, photos and data of every tree planted and acre reforested in your name. I've chosen to allocate money to the Mineral Weathering in Scotland campaign. This cutting-edge technique restores degraded land and spreads basalt over the rejuvenated area. This raises the pH of the soil system, bonding to the carbon in rainwater and using it as a sink. That's a bunch of science stuff, but I'll be honest with you, I back this one because part of the rotational grazing they use for restoring land is done by woolly pigs. I need to know more about these pigs. Consider offsetting your carbon footprint on Ren. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Well, no two ways about it. This episode is going to suck. Apologies in advance to our sponsor, who has wasted their money on an unwatchable product. Apologies to you, our viewers, for sitting through this monstrosity. And apologies to future Joseph, who will have to string this nonsense together. Welcome to 2007. Crush Card Virus is legal. There's not much to say outside of that. Crush Card Virus was historically extremely powerful, and it gets a lot better when people aren't playing the utility monsters that were popular around its release, and start playing... 2800 beaters because of the rules of Junior Journey. As a result, this will likely dome all the monsters out of your opponent's hand and everything they draw for the next three turns. In a format where one singular turn can lead to upwards of 6,000 points of damage, that's a disaster. Anyway, outside of Crush Card Virus, I'm actually playing a really interesting deck. This is Reptiles, a deck enabled by Snake Rain specifically. Now, you might be thinking, what's the payoff to a card that requires this much investment? Well, Venomenon, the King of Poisonous Snakes, cannot be special summoned except by an effect monster's effect, but actually has no stipulation preventing it from being normal summoned. This card gains 500 for every reptile monster in your graveyard, which is usually like 12, and when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can banish a reptile from your graveyard to special summon this card. If you find this monster early, it's a dark type monster, and you can go ahead and fire off your crush card virus and win the game on the spot. If you find it late, your opponent hasn't drawn a crush card virus, and you're able to attack them for a ton of damage. Moreover, this card has zero attack. That means that even if your opponent fires off a crush card virus, you will be able to summon this monster regardless. I feel pretty good about this deck's chances, but I can't feel perfect just because so many high power cards exist in this format, we could get blown out from nothing. Let's do the card by card real quick. Lightened Darkness Dragon is another huge staple in this format and is going to be hell to play with and around. Three Sangan, three Silent Abyss, this and Firestorm Prominence are reptile type monsters which, when they're destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, pop everything that isn't their same attribute or is face down. We're playing three Screech, a 1500 attack point monster which, when it's destroyed by battle, sent 
sends water monsters from your deck to the graveyard. It's like a worse snake rain. Three Venomenon. You can summon this normally, or you can summon it from your deck using damage equals reptile after you've taken damage from a battle involving a reptile monster. We've got three Go Giga Gaga Gigo, one Sinister Serpent to send off the snake rain, and then Dark Hole, Heavy Storm Monster Reborn, Triple Premature Burial. That's not sticking around. Three Snake Rain, one Call of the Haunted, Triple Crush Card Virus, Triple Damage Reptile, and Triple Raigeki Break. In the side, we've got BES Tetrans, three Confiscations, a Giant Trunade, Triple Nobleman of Crossout, Double Bottomless Trap Hole, Double Dust, and Double Mind Crush. So, hope I get to show off a phenomenon, but if not, it's going to be Crush Card Virus's fault. It's going to be a weird episode, y'all. As I'm sure you have already noticed, there is a particular card that was somewhat important to the TCG that is in this deck, a card that was hidden behind a price barrier that meant that very few could have one, if any at all, that is now available at three copies apiece for the low, low price of the health of your format in Junior Journey. Yes, 2007 introduced Crush Card Virus. And oh boy, is it as devastating as ever. It does provide something interesting to the series, I will say, in that it creates a incentive to run dinky monsters in a way that we've never had before. But ultimately, it is still Crush Card Virus. That being said, the Junior Journey community over at MBT's Discord has done a lot of work to balance decks around this format, to work in concert with Crush Card Virus, to min-max their ability to get the most out of Crush Card while getting punished by their opponent's Crush Cards the least. A perfect concert, a perfect circle, if you will. This beautifully tuned deck is not what we're going to be playing today. No, this is what I'm going to be playing today. Yes, I saw Perfect Circle and I thought, not janky enough, folks. So today I am playing Snipe Hunter. This deck is meant to exploit a very particular interaction, which is the interaction between Night Assailant and another copy of Night Assailant. Once you get a single Night Assailant into rotation, you get basically infinite discards as long as you want them, which means board clearing off of Snipe Hunter. It means free spot removal off of Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and Raigeki Break. This is made possible by the interaction between Night Assailant and Crush Card Virus. Since Night Assailant is a prime target for Crush Card Virus, it allows you to get the Night Assailant in the graveyard use it for something useful, and then have an infinite loop immediately available. The rest of the deck revolves around big bunguses, some very important big bunguses, namely Light and Darkness Dragon, a card that is entirely balanced around the fact that you have to tribute summon for it, which is not the case in Junior Journey, and Despair from the Dark, a card that is actually immune to Crush Card Virus, because if it is destroyed while it is in your hand or your deck, it resurrects itself automatically, which is very cool because of this deck's inclusion of another virus, Eradicator Epidemic. This card's condition is ludicrously easy to meet, which means that you can knock out your opponent's interaction cards for an entire three turns, which is good enough in a deck that has 2,900 beat sticks at the ready to get in the W. Uh, toss in just a bunch of resurrection cards and you are off to the races. My side deck is a little bit tweaked around what was given to me by the Junior Journey community. I want to really shout out I Wish I Was Dead and uh, a Depressed Idiot and Austin CK for pilling me to this deck and showing me this list. I have two Dust Tornado for the stall matchups, three DD Crow. It's very good against the Perfect Circle matchup, but it's also very good against another matchup, a Reptile deck that is spectacularly somewhat competitive in this format, and I hope we get to show that one to y'all soon enough. And two Fissure, which deals with Light and Darkness Dragon very nicely because it makes it very easy to run over, but also gets rid of things like BES Tetran, which I also have cited for control matchups. I have three Trihorned Dragon, which maximizes my ability to use Eradicator Epidemic Virus, and finally three copies of the Forceful Sentry, which is extremely good when you're on the play for knocking out a Crush Card Virus and determining which of your traps is the best one to set for the next turn if you don't have a Crush Card yourself. This deck looks so, so funny and I cannot wait to get into the duels. But first, we do have a sponsor today. 
Today's sponsor is here to help us reduce our carbon footprint, to make the individual lifestyle changes we need to make in order to have a lifestyle more compatible with a sustainable future. But honestly, an app and certainly card games are not going to get us to the climate future that we need. This fight is bigger than all of that. And because of this series' theme, and because this is an issue that's near and dear to my heart, and because we have our sponsor for today, I wanted to take a second to talk with you all about that. What is important in the fight against the climate crisis, against absolute catastrophe and disaster, isn't about parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere. It's not about degrees of increased temperature. It's about protecting what's important to us. It's about having healthy and vibrant communities. It's about the people that we love and the things that we love to do. And one of the communities that I want to maintain for a good long time is my Yu-Gi-Oh! community online. I want to spend a long life creating new things, making art, and bringing dumb stuff into the world for all of you to enjoy. And that won't be possible if we don't fight against this thing. So I implore you, take some time out of your week, out of your next month, find out who's doing what in your community, who is protecting against new uh, fossil fuel installations, who is getting food to people who need it, shelter to people who need it, creating a community that can be resilient to bad changes in the climate, uh, and doing what they can to stop the climate catastrophe as it's coming. There is so much that we can be doing right now, and there are a lot of people who are already in it. If you're somebody who can make phone calls or emails or gather friends in a place to show up for a town hall, whatever it is that you can do, I'm sure there is something. I Every one of us has the power to make a difference in this fight, and none of us is alone in it. So I really hope that you can take some time to find your community that you can fight for and fight with, and to find what makes uh, you an important player in the fight against climate catastrophe. I appreciate your allowing me to be on my soapbox for a little while. Let's get into these silly, silly duels. Well, I am surprised that we're back here. I mean, truly, I am shocked. I thought that putting people on the show who knew what they were doing would really improve our chances of affecting the future. Uh, but instead, it looks like nothing has changed whatsoever. No matter what we are throwing at the wall, it is not sticking. Yeah, this is very much like my real experience with climate activism. You get all the all the people involved and then everything goes to shit in the face of a virus. Uh, I guess I will say good luck to you. I hope that 1,000 or fewer attack point dark monsters stay out of your opener. And uh, I, I am ready. I am ready when you are. I once again do not possess a die. Oh, don't uh, worry. I, I'm picking randomly now. I've decided that potentially I should uh, embrace a uh, more ecologically sound method of picking rock, paper, scissors than always going for paper. I mean, think of all the trees that have died from my RPS alone. That's a good point. Well, if we're thinking, if we're thinking in terms of uh, ecological plants, I think that metal being the most recyclable material we have means that you may be going for scissors here. So I'll go for You're rock. Right. I should have picked wow. paper then. I should have literally just lied and picked paper. <laughs> it worked. Okay. Uh, I think I have to go first here. I don't think there is yeah. any other choice in this game. I'm oh. looking forward to seeing which version of the deck you get. Um, I am going to set a monster and set a back row. And it's your go. You got it. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Main one, I will set a monster. Okay. All right. Well, I didn't think I'd get this far. Time for me to reveal the most powerful card in my deck, RJ. A card for which you have absolutely no idea how to stop. I'm talking about Snake Rain, baby. Oh, you're playing the Snake Deck. Yes. I'm so happy that this oh is the matchup we have today. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pitch for cost a copy of Crush Card Virus. Uh, and then, I mean, let's let's get snaking. Pitching a Crush Card Virus for cost uh, does not bode well for me 
I, it could be anything else in my hand. Really, truly could be anything. There is no other move you could have done that could more solidly confirm for me the fact that you have a crush card virus online. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I literally do virus. not know what you're talking about. I, I could be anything. Uh, so I'm going to send uh, Sinister Serpent. Uh, oh, my send, God. <laughs> uh, Venomenon. Uh, let's just let's just get the toolbox ready in case I draw like a pre mat. We'll go uh, Firestorm Prominence. Oh my God! Yep. <laughs> and we'll go uh, Silent Abyss. Ah, uh, why can we only set one card per turn? This is so crappy. Oh, okay. I'll set one card and I pass have, it back to you. I have a feeling I know what one card you are in the process of setting. Literally, could be Do anything. Do you have anything in draw phase? Thinking. No, I don't. Okay, no, you're good. Main phase. Yep. Let's actually just start by flip summoning a Night Assailant All and right. targeting your face down monster. Uh, this is unfortunately a Screech. Oh. Mm. Okay. Uh, that is pretty decent. I am going to normal summon a throwback to episode two of this show, Cosmo Queen. There she is. I'll go into battle. Uh, I will swing in with my queen. I'll take 31 here. Okay, and main phase two, I will set a back row, and I will end my turn. All right, standby main. Should actually probably in standby phase, knowing the capability of this deck to show off a particular card if I allow you to get Venomenon on the field, I am going to fire my new my newly drawn crush card virus here. <sighs> okay, all right. Uh, so my hand is uh, Crush Card Virus, Screech, and Silent Abyss. I got rid of the Abyss, which is crucial in this matchup. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to normal summon Screech. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll try it. Let's get in. Oh, I guess I have to do this on attack deck, right? Uh, I'll activate damage equals reptile. Oh my god, I love this card. I love this deck so much. I'm so glad you're playing it. Yeah, go for it. All right, so we'll resolve. Wait, hold up. Screech has 1,500 attack, doesn't it? Oh my, are you fucking with me? <laughs> this card dies to CCV. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, uh, go ahead. I'll draw for two. Oh, do I just clutch this with that card? I am going to normal summon myself a light and darkness dragon. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we're going to go into battle, and I will attack with Lad first. Uh, I'll take 28, and you have got it. Uh, you know the set card CCV. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, well, uh... <laughs> Well, you know, you drew crush card virus. I mean, what can uh, what can we say? <laughs> what can we say other than that? Yeah, that <laughs> that's that is the situation oh, we're man. in right now. I, I I even kept the um uh the stupid uh sinister serpent in the grave on spec that it would make my phenomenon bigger, and instead it made me dead. Oh, oh lord! All right. Well, this is a pretty boring turn but you know it is what it is uh, i'm gonna normal summon lad Ooh. set a bunch of cards and by that i mean i will set one card uh and <laughs> you are good to go all right i will draw for turn yep. uh oh that's unhelpful under these circumstances but this is pretty decent i will normal summon an invader of darkness yeah, you're really playing this guy huh <laughs> I, I am really playing this guy. He's finally getting his revenge after years of being the worst secret from IOC. Uh, let's let's just s swing him in. Uh, am I going to lose my back row from this? Uh, probably. I just assumed that you wouldn't be able to walk over a 2,800-point monster. I don't know why I assumed that. I will uh, now lose my damage equals reptile. Oh. Okay, uh, main phase two, I will set a back row, and I will end my turn. All right, stand by main. Uh, what the hell am I going to do with this? 
Well, I guess I might go for it. Uh, let's heavy. Chain Eradicator to yep. your heavy. And I will declare trap cards. Oh, thank God. Okay. Uh, my hand is a Reborn Preemie Crush card. Oh, oh God. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, see you next turn, buddy. Uh, okay. Uh, draw. I will not allow you to premature burial my Invader of Darkness, for I shall premature bury my own Invader of Darkness. Yeah, here we go. Uh, I will go into battle phase. I'll swing in for 29. I will take it. And then main phase two, I will T-set and pass. Oh my gosh, that uh, was such an insane turn. Oh no. Uh, your go? <laughs> Oh, what you got? Yeah, that's exactly what oh! I needed. <laughs> uh, I guess I will pay eight. Feel great here. Uh, I'm gonna target the lad. I have bad news about no, lad. Oh, come on, dog. <laughs> oh, you read my card. Oh, I'm just dead here. No, not like this. All right, finish me off quick. I I'll I'll do it. Uh, I have the other invader of darkness in hand. Oh God! Oh, All right. Oh no! Uh, let okay. me get let me get a game three. Let me get a game. Yeah, three let's here. go for game three. Yeah, yeah. Your deck deserves it. I guess let's see what we can do. Let's see if this time we can open Crush Card Virus. Okay. Oh, I mean. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, let's go one, two, back to you. Draw for turn, normal summon snipe hunter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Declare snipe hunter. Discard night assailant targeting your back row. No response. Okay, let's... Let's do it. Let's get to sniping. Let's go. Easy. Oh, for fuck's sake. Let's go. Now, if you pinch the <laughs> second night again. assailant, I will be upset. Yeah, let's try for it one more time. Discarding Cosmo Queen and targeting your back row again. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank is, goodness. Uh, damage equals reptile. Oh, good. Okay. We're going to go into battle. I'll attack into your face down what I imagine is a screech. It nope. is a silent abyss. Uh, sure. Main phase two, I will set a back row and end my turn. Well, at least it can't be crush card virus. You're not wrong. Uh, stand by main. Okay. Uh, I will switch my silent abyss to attack position. Okay. Battle. I will take 500. All right. Second main, I will normal summon Venomenon, the king of poisonous snakes. We've got a zero attack point Venomenon, huh? And I, I uh, invite you to speculate as to why I might be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we have to try for this. I'm going to call of the haunted in the end phase, targeting uh, Snipe Hunter. That's fine. Okay. All right. Draw for turn. Show me the Night Assailant. Uh, it's not Night Assailant. I'm going to help <laughs> roll this along in standby, if you'll permit it. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a feeling about what's wow. coming next. <laughs> oh. Very fun card. Mm. Losing the call to crush card is rough. There goes my lad, and I will reveal Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, and I will reveal Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Wow, I this this card is such a swing. I literally do not think you can win from this position. That is I will set a back row. Anything in standby? Nothing in standby. Uh, lad. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, bada bing. Um, okay. uh, draw your last pathetic card so I can end you, RJ. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Yep, that is it. <laughs> we played three really good games here today. I would say maybe oh, the yeah. best we've ever played. It's oh. really funny. Uh, there is a really cool perfect circle deck that exists in this format that I was expecting you to play because it's because it's got heroes in it. And I was like, okay, uh, the, the perfect circle matchup is actually an interesting mirror match. But I decided to go with the Snipe Hunter deck because it's funny. You decided to go with the Reptile deck and we just ended it up. <laughs> I mean, lo what, hey. what did you say? No matter what we uh, throw at the wall, there is a virus uh, that we all kind of have to um, <laughs> abide by. In fact, there might yep. be two. Uh, th this, this was hell. This was awful. I mean, this was absolutely the worst. There was a lot of cool stuff that I was really excited to see. I'm happy you were playing Snipe with the, I imagine you're on three Night Assailant. Uh, yep. Super cool way to potentially get infinite value. There's not a lot of really good infinite uh, discard outlets in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, which is why the Night Assailant combo, despite being really strong, um, was never like game-breakingly good. Uh, speaking of cards that are strong, but not game-breakingly good, we had Snake Rain. Uh, this yep. was super sick in a format where you can normal summon phenomenon. I mean, there's just a lot going on. Uh, but then there, there's also, uh, some other stuff going on. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This was, this was, I think by far our worst meta yet. Oh yeah. Uh, no. I mean, probably worse than, than, uh, chaos turbo. Yeah, there was like a world where you got an interesting grind game, like Painful Choice in Chaos Turbo with like the Sinister Serpent deck got you some interesting lines at least. This was basically you hit a virus or you lost. This is also a weird one when it comes to bans because there are a lot of problems in this format that just never made it to the field because of the viruses and lad. Like the fact that uh, as per recent Edison meta, every deck is running three copies of Phoenix Wing Windblast, three copies of Raigeki Break, and three copies of Premature Burial have been featured in every single deck as well. Only one of which we ever saw activated. <laughs> uh, man, I, I just do not know. So, I mean, first things first, uh, we're banning Crush Card Virus, right? Absolutely, and, and probably we're going to follow that up by banishing fire. Eradicator as well. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. Now, now that It the turns out that Eradicator was balanced around the fact that it takes work in the TCG to get a 2,500 or more attack point monster. I remember this only really starting to be good in, like, Dragon Ruler format because Big Eye was around. In Junior format, literally everything has over 2,500 attack except your Crush Guard targets. It saw, like, fringe play in, uh... Dark World back in the day, but uh, yeah, no, uh, not not particularly uh, good. I guess we should probably ban Lad, right? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> that card is, while it does lose to a lot of things, like, you know, normal summoning any monster, a Lad on the field guarantees that whatever you do next in terms of, like, normal summoning, attacking, is is, is going to go through. Uh, so I do think, again, another monster that whose balance was predicated around the idea that it takes work to put a guy that big on the board. I also think it's time that we limit pre-mat. Yeah, uh, uh, that was actually going to be my next suggestion. Uh, unbelievable. Yep. Just an absolutely nuts card. And a thing that didn't get shown off this episode, Disc Commander is legal at three in this uh, in this format. Unerratted as well. Uh, and so Premature Burial is an absolutely nutso card. I guess we should have the conversation about Raigeki Break and Phoenix Wing Windblast. Uh, they're very strong cards. I don't really have a problem with them at three. I don't know how you feel about it. I I want to see them be a ubiquitous problem in the format before I hit them. I think while they are really strong, they also cost advantage, something that is surprisingly difficult to find in junior format mm -hmm. uh, and are not blowout cards aside from 
achieving the perfect circle experience with Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. So I'm fine with keeping them around until they cause us a problem. I am tempted. I have I have kind of a spicy idea for how we may be able to pre-limit the powers of Phoenix Wing Wind Blast in and uh, uh, Raigeki Break in a way that still leaves some work to be done by the player trying to counter it. Okay. I think it might be time for Jinzo to make a little bit of an additional return to the format. You literally are playing Perfect Circle, and you want Jinzo back. Okay. Uh, what is he at now? Zero? One. You want to put him to three? Ah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I could sign off on that one, honestly. Legitimate. My thinking was that uh, Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and Raigeki Break being so powerful in the format uh, creates a balancing act between them and things like Fisher and Soul Taker, uh, which are pretty easy outs to Jinzo. But I also definitely understand your hesitation around bringing it back. The thing that I'm afraid of is that historically, huge checks on Jinzo have been stuff like Book of Moon, which uh, we do not have in the same capacity. <laughs> do you want to meet in the middle and we could do everyone's favorite van list change? And <laughs> semi-limit Jinzo, let's do it! Yeah, easy! Yeah, I literally don't know what else to hit, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm at a I'm at a loss for words. It's almost a scenario where like I just feel like we have no idea what is broken and stupid because there is, you know, a higher level of broken and stupid in the virus cards that we never were able to permeate. So I don't know, you know, maybe next time we find out Silent Abyss and Fire Prominence are like broken to hell. Uh but I'll, I'll be honest with you, I want to see it. Like, whatever is lurking under the viruses, I do actually want to see it ruin a format. Exactly. That's what I want to see. I want to see interesting things ruin the format, not uh, sack a monster for a single trap or destroy your opponent's entire deck. <laughs> well, uh, in that case, I don't know. You want to call it here? Let's leave it to our guests to find a way to ruin our format better than we could. All right, everyone in the comments, if you can think of specific people who you think would be like absolute kings or queens at figuring out what we have left legal accidentally, let us know and we will do our best to source the biggest jank enthusiasts possible. I, I imagine there is a lot of nonsense that exists on the margins of this one. Bring forward the jank monarchs. <laughs> Thank you.